friends, my name is Marines and today I'll be talking about the 10 least popular books I've read according to Goodreads. I saw a video like this on Rinsey from Rinsey Reads' channel. She did the least popular books on her TBR and she got the idea from some videos that she had seen about the 10 most popular books on people's TBRs. So I'll put all of the links to those videos down in the description so you guys can see where this idea came from. I really like the idea of doing the most popular and the least popular, but then I got to thinking that I enjoy talking about books that I've read more than just telling you synopsis about books that I want to read, which I might still do those videos, but I wanted to start off with this video about the books that I've actually read. So let's get started. I'm going to go from the most to the least, least popular, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I'm basing this all on how many ratings are on Goodreads. Number 10 is The Samaritan by Fred Venturini, which has 547 ratings on Goodreads. This is adult science fiction that was originally published in 2011. It follows the story of a man in a small town who lives in the shadow of his best friend and doesn't have a lot going for him but then he discovers that he has this ability to regrow limbs and so he decides to use that ability to go on a TV show and he kind of gets fame and fortune through that TV show but he also wants to be able to help his unrequited love get out of an abusive marriage. I read this in December of 2014 and at that time I was at a job that was very slow and so my friend and I took to kind of picking books out together or for each other. I'm pretty sure that she was the one who picked this and I don't know how she found it. I'm thinking it was through Amazon on, but she picked this and we read it together. I don't even think that you can buy this book anymore. This was re-released under a new title and a new cover and I'm pretty sure that is still available but since this was like the first release I don't I'm not sure if you can even buy this so I'm super super glad that after I read it and enjoyed it that I made sure to buy myself a copy. It's always very weird to talk about these books that you read years ago especially because I feel like I've grown so much as a reader and a reviewer over the last three years that I've been on books booktube so talking about anything pre booktube always gives me a little bit of pause because not only is it more difficult to remember but I'm always like I don't know 2014 me really liked it that all said I really enjoyed this book when I read it but it is very dark very gritty very very sad story it has this fantastical element of limb regeneration but it is truly a story about loss and how you live when you've suffered a great loss dale who is the main character and his best friend both border on being unlikable characters so i can see people going into this and being rubbed the wrong way by both of them but i think that them as a pair is what really kept it okay for me because their friendship and their loyalty to each other was better the, the whole was better than either one of the halves. When the book was later re-released I read it as well and he the author changed the ending for very specific reasons which I totally understand but I found that I enjoyed the original ending more. It, it was sadder. It was way sadder. It almost left me with like a little bit of like hopelessness at the end but I understand why it happened and I felt like it almost fit the story better the way that it originally happened but in general I just thought that this was really well well written. It was something like I hadn't ever read before. I enjoyed the characters that were in it even though they weren't necessarily likable characters and I just thought the entire thing was very well done. I ended up giving it four and a half out of five stars. Number nine is The League of Strays by L.B. Shulman with 521 ratings on Goodreads. This is a YA contemporary slash suspense that was originally published in 2012. It's about this group of misfits that comes together with the purpose of seeking revenge on the those who have wronged them. I received this as an arc through NetGalley. It was definitely during the time that I kind of went a little wild requesting arcs on NetGalley because I thought it was the greatest thing ever. The entire premise deals with the fact of these bullied kids turning into the bullies and how that plays on the main character's conscious. Unfortunately, I found it incredibly clunky, especially in the writing. And I understand what the author was trying to do by getting the misfits to turn into the bullies to kind of like learn the lesson, but it made them all incredibly unsympathetic characters. The author tried to give them these 
these like tragic backstories in order to justify the fact that they were turning into the bullies but it was very uneven it was like I got a bad grade but then they were doing like homophobic things to the people that had wronged them and so it turned out to be very very strange and the main character doesn't actually learn her lesson or grow a backbone until way too far and late into the story so that the majority of what you read is just these very unlikable characters doing very crappy things to other people and then all based on the fact that you know crappy things were done back to them and that but not learning the lesson of that story until the very very last minute. I read this to the end because I felt compelled to at that time when I was young and innocent to read to the end of the arcs that I was receiving but this turned out to be a one out of five star read for me. Number eight is Rape Girl by Alina Klein with 514 ratings. This is a YA contemporary and it's a very short novel about the aftermath of a rape and it was originally published in 2012. I received this as an arc from NetGalley so I also read it in 2012. This is a snapshot of this girl's life immediately following the rape and as it particularly pertains to the fallout of that event. It is a very narrow window and you don't learn very much about the character outside this window of time and outside of her experience and this traumatic event. The writing was very simple, it was very stripped down, it had no frills. So it was a balance between feeling like there could have been a little bit more there but also this being a, a subject matter that hits very close to home and having genuine feelings about the things that she was discussing. There were moments while reading this that even in that very simple language she was describing her experience and the aftermath of it and it really made me cry. It was short and simple and very heartfelt and I ended up giving it three out of five stars. Number seven is Dark Room, a memoir in black and white by Laila Quintero Weaver with 428 reviews. This is a graphic memoir about Quintero Weaver's experience being an immigrant in Alabama during the civil rights movement. I thought that this memoir was at its best when it was flipping between all of these experiences. Her experience feeling othered, her family and her growing up experience, and then also the larger historical context of being in the South during the civil rights movement. Specifically, I love the parts where Weaver is talking about how her parents' country, the country that she came from very young, became almost mythical in their household. The way that the stories from the were passed down as lore. There were a few chapters in the middle that I thought were a little too far removed from her experience where it was almost just telling us the history that wasn't so I didn't see the connection as strongly as I did in other parts but I didn't mind it so much because at the end of the day it was still very educational. I picked this up in 2015 for Hispanic Heritage Month because I really wanted to read a graphic novel by a Latinx author and I'm very glad that I picked this up. I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four out of five stars. Number six is In Perfect Light by Benjamin Alida Sands with 389 ratings. This is an adult contemporary originally published in 2008 eight. There are multiple threads throughout the story but they all kind of surround Andres who is a man who's suffered great loss and he's going through so much, struggling so much with his own grief and loss that he lashes out twice in the very beginning of the story. In bits and pieces we really start to learn what has happened in Andres's life and it starts with the tragic loss of his parents so the beginning of his tragedy is being orphaned and it doesn't get better from there. I read this in 2015 and I loved it. I will say that it is very difficult to read and it is a story that is full of tragedy. I think the sadness and the amount of tragedy is put in balance because Alida Sands is a very good writer. He's a poet and I think a lot of his writing is very lyrical even though it is not overtly flowery. He just has a style about him where every word seems to fit exactly into place. His words speak such truth into the story and open it up into like larger human experiences and I think that's what kept the story from wandering into the territory of tragedy porn. I think that he brings a very balancing and human element to what he's saying. I can definitely see people struggling with how much sadness and tragedy there is in this particular story but for me like I said it was kept in balance. I gave this five out of five stars but I will issue trigger warnings for sexual abuse, child abuse, 
terminal illness, and drug abuse. Number five is Rosehead by Kasanya Anska with 301 ratings. This is a YA fantasy that was originally published in 2012. It's about a 12 year old girl who really doesn't want to be reunited with her family and at her family, her grandfather's estate, but then she discovers that the roses that are so prominent on this estate are actually carnivorous. And this pulls our main character into a deeper mystery about what's happening on this estate. I read this in 2014 and again, I have no idea how I found this. In the original review that I wrote, I compared this to a Tim Burton movie. It had that feeling and I just thought it was a very imaginative story and premise. Unfortunately I found that the story suffered from repetitive writing. There is some urgency built into figuring out the mystery what's going on in this estate but so much of the story is spent just standing around and talking between these characters especially as our main character tries to convince everyone that what she's seeing and experiencing is true. So not only are we reading about it in the story but then we're getting her telling every Everybody trying to convince them so there was a lot of repetition that just I thought slammed the brakes onto the urgency the story was trying to sell you on. It was a good idea that at the end of the day I thought could just use a little bit of tightening up. I gave this three out of five stars and I will say that this was probably the first time I ever wrote a review and the author found it and responded to me. <laughs> she was super sweet about it. She didn't say anything. She actually thanked me and pointed me in the direction of some of her other works because I said in the review that I would like to read additional work from her because I thought her ideas were very good. So she just replied in that way but it was I think the first moment that I was like oh my god people are reading my reviews. Number four is Lord Garson's Bride by Anna Campbell with 250 ratings. This is a Regency romance that was originally published this year in 2018. In the story, Lord Garson is engaged and he's essentially dumped when his fiance finds out that her first husband is not actually dead. So she leaves Garson for her original husband and then this becomes kind of part of his reputation within society and he's sick of it. So he decides that he just needs to marry for convenience at this point. He approaches his childhood friend friend Lady Jane Norris and proposes this marriage of convenience and so the rest of the story is the whole marriage of convenience turning into something more. I read this in March of this year and it was during the time that I asked for romance recommendations on Twitter. I think it was specifically about it not being like a misunderstanding romance or like douchey main male love interest so this was one of the things that was recommended to me on Twitter. I really enjoyed how the story started because they went directly into the proposal and marriage and that was kind of just the the setup and it wasn't that whole build up to the will they won't thing. I like Jane as a main character a whole lot. I thought Garson was just okay. He was kind of thick-headed and then the end of the story turned into this whole he didn't realize his true feelings and that just can be a little bit annoying for me. Anytime the, the plot is dependent on someone not realizing or not using their words I'm immediately like my my guard is up against that story. It's just a pet peeve. So the last half of the story did a little bit too much of that for my liking but overall it was a good experience. I gave it three out of five stars. Number three is The Middleman Volume 1 by Javier Grigio Markswatch with 130 ratings. This is Volume 1 of a graphic novel series that was originally published in 2006 and it follows the main character, The Middleman, who is kind of like a superhero. I read this in 2015, again as part of Hispanic Heritage Month when I was trying to read graphic novels by Latinx authors. I enjoyed this. It was first volume of a graphic novel series. It was heavy on the setup but I especially enjoyed it because the secondary character is a very sassy female main character and her name is Wendy. There is a lot of meta humor in here as well, very tongue in cheek. So overall it was just entertaining, a very easy read and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Number 2 is Woman in Front of Sun by Judith Ortiz Kofer with 86 ratings. This is a collection of essays and stories by Ortiz Kofer who is a Puerto Rican author and this was originally published in 2000. I absolutely loved the first half of this book. The first half of the book tells the story of how she became a writer through anecdotes that are supposed to illustrate her progression of becoming the person and the writer that she is. I thought they were such charming stories and just seeing the thread of it with that in mind of like you know the experience that she saw made her a writer. The second half shifts gears and then focuses on her experience as a writer and particularly as a Puerto Rican and as a woman. So it was still very 
good but I thought it didn't have the cohesiveness and kind of like that thread of the first half of the book I just know that this is a collection that I will revisit I kind of filed it away with all of my other like creative writing books that I own I don't know when I'll need it or when I'll pick it up but I just think that as any kind of creator these are the kinds of things that inspire creativity within you I gave it four and a half out of five stars and the least popular book I've ever read is Puppet Parade by Zeneb Alayan with 57 ratings. First published in 2012, this is a fantasy about a girl who is locked away by her family and she's told that she has a very ugly blemish on her face and she's not allowed to see herself in any kind of reflections. And a man who creates puppets and then they suddenly come to life and run away. So Sophie, the, the girl, she escapes her imprisonment and she joins forces with the boy Oliver and they set off on this adventure to recapture the puppets that have run away. I read this in 2012 and my review from then on Goodreads says that I actually found this through Goodreads and I decided to pick it up solely because of the premise. I was like, okay, gotta read this puppet story. I have no memory of finding it that way, but I do remember reading the story. Weirdly enough, this is another book that I've described as Tim Burton-esque. I thought when I read it back then that it was super charming and I especially enjoyed the two main characters. You have this woman who was forced into seclusion and who has never seen herself and this man who is self-secluded and is only surrounded by the creations that he makes and they have to join forces. This is one of those fantasy stories that is told almost as like a travel journey. They they go to different stops to search for the puppets that all make it to different places along this journey. That said, I think this book was self-published if I'm not mistaken and I just found that it could have used with a little bit more editing and tightening. Most of the faults came from needing to be cleaned up almost. And then you hit the end after this whole journey and it is very info dumpy. It just kind of explains everything very gracelessly. You get the satisfaction of being explained and ending but in a very unsatisfying way because it's just kind of like, I don't know man, it was like a puppet romp I read six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it three out of five stars. I'm very curious if any of you have heard of, read, or would be interested in reading any of the books that I've mentioned. Let's chat about it down in the comments. I would like to do the same like the most popular books that I've read but I have a feeling most of it would be like Harry Potter and the Hunger Games so I'll check out the list and I'll let you know if I'm gonna do that but if not maybe I'll look at my TBR as well. Some interesting stuff could be there. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Did you hear that? That was totally my knee cracking. <laughs> she thought he died in the Navy or something like that. I, <laughs> I probably should have liked this up. Let's try that again. And this was one of the recommendations. I don't know why I said that so slowly.